All right, so this is sort of the latest and greatest. There's a lot of discussion about CE and IT, and it's driven by this electronic medical record and health records and uh, health care information, HIE, healthcare information exchanges, um, and all that data that's required to uh, establish these accountable care communities. Okay, being able to treat a patient in all the continuum of care sites, you have to be able to exchange data. And it starts with the EMR, the, the data within a single organization, and EHRs across um, multiple organizations. The IHE, how many of you heard of the IHEs, the healthcare information exchanges? I think Utah's got a big one, don't they? Yeah, um, where disparate systems, so the EMR is one hospital, the EHR is perhaps the whole, you know, the health systems, all their hospitals plus their clinics and their docs, and then they're going to, and, and I, I, excuse me, HIE will then tie this health system to this health system. So, for instance, this is, um, Salt Lake City is my first stop on a three-leg trip. So heaven forbid something happens to me, I live in Arizona, um, it would be nice to believe, uh, I don't, but it would be nice to believe that if something happened to me in one of the three cities I'll be visiting, um, that my data would show up to that healthcare organization to be able to treat me appropriately. Now, the reality of the situation is that we're, we're not there um, as, as a country. Um, actually, we're not there as a world. Um, but that's where we're moving to, and that's why these are such big pieces, because if you think about it, if, if something happens to me um, in two days when I'm in the Washington, D.C. area, they don't have my history, so they have to do a lot of, if you will, quote unquote, unnecessary tests and diagnostics to figure out who I am and what I am to treat. Whereas if they had access perhaps to data in Arizona, they might be able to get to the treatment place faster. That's the theory. So, first thing I think is understanding all the electronic what's, the EMR, the EHR, the HIE, and understanding how they all flow. And then um, the other piece is understanding the drivers. Now here we have a regulatory driver to our healthcare organizations um, where your CIO now is kept up by this every night. I have to deliver a meaningful use EMR, EHR that will talk to an HIE. I don't think CIOs can use full words anymore. <laughs> it's all acronyms. <laughs> now what's important to us in the biomed community, obviously all this is important, but what's particularly important to us is that there's this little piece that a lot of folks miss uh, and quite frankly I was one of them until a colleague came and talked to me because she was doing a, a lot of work in the space is there's a requirement in there for charting vital signs. Okay. Well in today's world it's okay for that charting to occur manually. So the nurse or the physician or whomever looks at the bedside monitor, looks at the bedside monitor, turns over here and types it in, or writes it on the tablet, or worse yet, writes it on their leg, three hours later goes to a nursing station and it's like, is that room? No, that was room 15. Okay, <laughs> and that's, that's happening, people. That's happening. Okay, down the road, the expectation is that happens automatically. And all these devices that we take care of are feeding their data directly into the EMR. Now, I don't say all of them because some of them don't have data that would, would be collected, but the, most of them do, many of them do, and things that you don't even think about, like scales. Scales is a big one, especially when you're talking about the neonatal environment or the other end of the spectrum, the geriatric patient population. Minute changes in weight have enormous impact on the clinical outcomes. So capturing that information on a routine basis, capturing it even outside of the acute care center, capturing it in physician offices and clinics and all those places. So this is going to have to happen electronically. Well, there's a lot of data, and, and my colleague Bridget Mormon um, put, put this definition together for me, which I think is very, um, very uh, just on the money, which is the ability of uh, interoperability um, is the ability of a system or a product to work with other systems or products without special effort on the part of the customer. That having to look and transcribe, that's special effort, okay? That's not interoperable. Um, the nurse is not middleware. They really don't want to be referred to as middleware. Okay. Um, and this applies whether you're talking about the device into an EMR or the EMR 
talking to an EHR or the EHR to the HIE. All of these pieces, all of these are systems of a much bigger system. So is this starting to see how this all kind of builds? Okay. So when your CIO talks about interoperability, you need to understand where he or she's coming from. What, what part of this big system are they referring to? Our little piece of the medical device into the EMR or some other piece in the chain? Being educated is, is, is a huge piece. And I'll tell you why. It's because they don't have this kind of, your CIO doesn't have this kind of information down here in these charts below. They have gut instinct at best of whether devices in the hospital can connect and talk to the, uh, the information systems. They really don't know. They are looking at their EMR list with a Cerner or Epic or an in-house, something they built themselves. Is there a shopping list that says we've interfaced with these particular OEMs? For these particular makes and models, that, that's about the best they have. Wait, you guys have an inventory. You have all the devices. You have the detail, okay? Now, what my team and I have started doing is helping healthcare organizations, working closely, hand in hand with the biomed departments, is to start collecting that information. How interoperable are those devices? Thinking to yourself, what are the devices that spit out diagnostic and therapeutic data that the nurses are always writing down on their flow sheets? Okay? What are those devices? Okay? Because to, to do your entire inventory, it could be anywhere from 3,000 to 30,000 or more line items, you've got to prioritize. But starting with that inventory and collecting those, you have a gold mine of information to take to your IT team as they're trying to set priorities of what devices should they be building interfaces for? I can tell you, I've had those conversations. Just um, earlier this spring, I sat down with a, a woman in the Northeast that was responsible for the, um, the deployment of a new EMR. And they had a list of devices. She said, oh, here's our list of devices that we're going to interface. And I just scanned it real quick. There were, it, I want to say there were two make models on there that I knew off the top of my head the manufacturer no longer supported. I said, you might want to rethink these two. Because why do you want to spend, interfaces are running what? Ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a pop? That's if you get them like, on sale. Why would you spend that money on devices that are no longer supported that your organization probably should or will be replacing in the near term? That is incredibly important information that your information technology teams, your CIO, they don't have this. Unless they have pulled a biomed Unless they have dedicated an individual, they do not have this data. And this is expertise you can bring to the table. If you don't have a relationship with your IT department, take them a gift. Open the door. <laughs>